Good day, my dear Ninth Class students. I'm very happy that I get the opportunity to continue to teach coordinate geometry to you. Previously, I taught lines and angles that I finished. The next chapter is Chapter Five, coordinate geometry. And uh, yes, uh, the, in the previous. Uh, Part that is part one. I gave you all the all the details how the coordinate system is represented on a piece of paper and a graph paper, and I also told you some introduction. And prior to that, I want to say um, prior to that I gave you some made some general comments. I want to repeat them now. I hope. You guys are watching the videos. We so far made more than 120 videos in different subjects for different classes. You have to continue to observe or watch the videos along with the textbooks. Then it will be more useful. So, with that assumption, I. With that assumption, we are proceeding ahead. That you have the textbooks. Unfortunately, of course, many of you do not have them. If you are borrowing from somebody, that's a different story. But you have to have your own textbooks. Now, without wasting much time on that, I want to move on to the move on to the actual uh, teaching the coordinate geometry. I told you that this coordinate geometry. Was developed in the 17th century by a famous ma mathematician by name Rene Descartes, also known in a different language Cartesius, C A R T E S T E S I U S, Cartesius, C A R T E S I U S. That is the mathematician's short name. Now, because he developed this uh, geometry, coordinate geometry, he the the whole system is called Cartesian, Cartesian, just like India and Indian Cartesian coordinates. The coordinate system, the whole system is Cartesian coordinate. Let us say system. System. Okay. He is he is the pioneer of this coordinate system, and the whole mathematics, all the space technology, uses his uh, coordinate system. In the previous class, I gave you some examples how to locate an object in the universe with the coordinate system. So it is very very important. But here in this class, we are going to limit ourselves to a plane geometry. That means in, it has only two coordinates, x and y coordinates. That means this is a plane. The book, the book that you have here is this is a this is a plane. So plane geometry has x and y coordinates. Now in the so in the previous class, I mentioned about the x coordinate y coordinate and how a point is represented things like that that means if you take a graph paper i'm just only summarizing a little bit i'm going fast if you take a graph paper and divide that into four parts and you call this is this point is called the origin this is x axis capital x now you cannot write small that is mistake so you have to put capital x And this is x dash. This is y, y capital y again. This is y dash. That means if you draw two lines perpendicular to each other, this is the point origin. O R I G N. This is x coordinate, x x axis. This is y axis. The then the bottom portion is y dash or minus y. See, this is x, so this is x dash. Now any point P. 
any point P or M or Q or R M has to be designated by two 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 numbers. That is, let us say M two three or uh, K X Y. So this the first number indicates the equal the the distance of the point along the x axis and the second number this is the present the distance of the point along the y axis suppose you want to find you want to plot m23 m23 that means we have to go two units let's say this is 1 2 3 i will say 1 2 3 this is you have to go walk along x axis two units and then parallel to y axis three unit that means this is your point m that's i explained all that i want to go rush through because i wanted to spend my time more on the problems so m23 the first two number represents the axis of x coordinate the second number represents the y coordinate and also it is called ordinate axis of a b s c i s s a axis of and the y coordinate is ordinate o r d i n a t e okay all right let's say sign ordinate so if if you say k 2.5 and 7.5 that is say that means k this is in the if you draw a, if you draw two lines like this and if you, there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 like that Here similarly one two three four five. This is two point five. That means this is two one two three. That means two point five is here one two three four five six seven eight. So there is seven point five. That is seven point five. So this is your point K. Now <clears throat> I also told you this is x-axis. This is minus x-axis. So here this is minus one minus two minus three like that. Similarly, this is y axis one two three. This is minus one minus two minus three like that. Okay, so that so given a point, it can be represented on a graph paper with the proper scale. You normally you use one centimeter is equal to one unit, and based on that you can represent the point. Now here you can see if you take a point here, this one is called the first quadrant. This is the second quadrant. This is the third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. We go in the anti-clockwise direction. This is the anti-clockwise direction. So, in the first coordinate, x-axis positive, y-axis also positive. In the second coordinate, x-axis is negative, y-coordinate is positive. In the third third quadrant, quadrant quadrant means one fourth. Qua, qua means pa, one fourth, quarter. So quarter means one fourth. Quarter is one by four. So here, second quadrant in this y-axis is positive, x-axis is negative. That means here, if you put a line in, just a typical sample example, yes, say yes, x-axis is negative, so minus two plus a y-axis is three. So x coordinate will be negative. Y coordinate will be positive, whereas in the third one, if both are negative, x axis is negative, y axis also negative. Let us say this is t is minus three minus five like that. Whereas in the fourth coordinate, x coordinate is positive, y coordinate is negative. That means this let us say two. I am saying u two and uh, minus three. So in the coordinate system, there are four quadrants: first, second. First, second, third, and fourth. In the first quadrant, both x and y axis are positive. Whereas in the second quadrant, x coordinate is negative and y coordinate is positive. You don't have to. This is not like this is not like a rocket science. You have to memorize. Oh my God, and all that. No, just to draw a sketch here. It's simple. It's very very simple. Draw a line like this. This is the origin O. This is x axis. This is minus x. Let me all from here. These are all negative. From here, these are all positive. Similarly, here this is the this is all these are all positive and this is the negative. That's it. It's very simple. 
And depending on point here, this point, suppose I have a point here at such is equal to y x is also equal to. Whereas here, if I have a point here at such is positive, y x is equal to, like that. You can easily know that. And uh, <coughs> incidentally, this point, like I said, origin, origin coordinates are 0, 0. Because x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is 0. Now, and also, suppose you have a point. You have a point like uh, P, 0, 3. What does it mean? The x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is 3. That means here, x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is 3. If you go 3 unit, this is your P. Similarly, suppose I have R, R, uh, 5, uh, 5 and 0. Let us say R, 5 and 0. That means x coordinate is 5. So you go 5 units here. And for the y, it is 0. That means it, it lies on the x-axis. This is r. So where if the x-coordinate is 0, if the x-coordinate is 0, the point lies on the y-axis. If y-axis is 0, uh, y-coordinate is 0, or ordinate is 0, the point lies on the x-axis. So here, <coughs> having said all this, now, if we go to the problem, first I actually, as a matter of fact, I thought, I thought, I would, uh, just like the, just like the previous chapter, where I selected some problems, and I, I, I explained one after another. Here also, I thought I would do that. That's why I said here, exercise page number and problem number. But, I, I mean, that, these are not very big, uh, difficult problems. So, each problem is different. So, what I thought is, I will select some problem at random right away on this part, rather than initially fixing up, these are the problems I'm going to tell you. I'm not doing that here. So, it's simple. As long as you know, summary, this is the origin, this is x-axis, this is y-axis, this is minus x, or sometimes x dash, we will put it, this is minus y or y dash. This is all positive. This is positive. Here this is all negative. This is negative. Okay, as long as you know, this is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the first quadrant, this is second quadrant, this is third quadrant, and this is fourth quadrant. As long as, as long as you know, as long as you know how the coordinates are, how the coordinates are, Sorry. Sorry. So as long as you understand the the coordinate system, it's a piece of cake, it's not uh, difficult. And also in some of the exercises, we plot all these points. Sometimes you can make a building, or you can make a, a letter, or sometimes you can make a, a number. So just by joining the various points. So here, for example, I would like to take um, the first, there are, not, there are not many problems in the first exercise. Let me go through 5.2. Let me see what it is. Yeah, let us see 5.2. Write the quadrant in which the following points lie. First one, I have, I take minus 2, 3. This is 1. You have to put the bracket. So this is how you mark it. First you write the x-axis coordinate and then the y-coordinate. And then you throw it to the that's how you have to represent. Minus 2, 3, and then you have 3, 0, and then let us say 4, 2, like that. So you see, this one, which quadrant it is? The x coordinate is negative, and y coordinate is positive. That means this is the second quadrant. Right? This is negative, this is positive. Minus 2, this way, 3. Up. So his point is somewhere there, second quadrant. Similarly, 3, 0. That means x coordinate is 3, y coordinate is 0. That means he is, it is on the x axis. Okay? It is not in the quadrant, it is on the x axis. Similarly, 4, 2. 4 is this is positive, this also is positive. That means it is in the first quadrant. Understand? So what you do is you represent this point. You represent these points on a graph paper and immediately you can see that. 
write the abscissa and the ordinate of the following points. Abscissa and ordinate. Now, let's say the first problem is minus 5, 3. The first coordinate, first number is the x coordinate or it's also called abscissa, A, B, S, C, I, S, S, A. Right? 3. The second number is the y coordinate or ordinate, O, R, D, I, N, A, T, T. This is called the ordinate. So, when the Cartesian coordinate, it's a universal law. The first number represents the x coordinate, the second number represents the y coordinate. Nobody can change it. That's a law, rule. Just like you see, when you say one centimeter, that this that that length is universally accepted. It is it, this particular length only is called one centimeter. Then nobody can change it. Okay, no government can change it. Now next one. Which of the following point lie on the axis? You have to find out which points lie on the axis. Which points lie on the axis? Now I told you earlier, if the x-coordinate is zero, that means it is lying on the y-axis. If the y-coordinate is zero, it is lying on the x-axis. If none of them are zero, that means the point has to be in the either this coordinate or this coordinate, this coordinate or this coordinate, depending on the values, whether it's positive or negative. Okay, for example, I will take uh, uh, minus 5, minus 8, minus 5, minus 8, that is one point, and another one I will take 7, 0, another one I will take 0, minus 8, 0, minus 8. Now this one is minus 5, minus 8, minus 5, minus 8, that means the point is here, somewhere in the third quadrant, this is in the third quadrant. It is not on the either x-axis or y-axis, no. Now, for example, this one you could take, 0 and minus 8, x coordinate is 0, minus 8 is the point is here, that means the point is on the y-axis. Similarly, 7, 0, x-axis, 7, y coordinate is 0, that means it is on the x-axis. Okay? You got it? Okay. Now, um, write the following based on the graph. That there are some points here, you have to write down what is the what is the ordinate? What is the abscissa? That's a piece of cake. I don't think you, I need to explain that uh, that very well. Okay? You already know that. Now, the third exercise, if you go, third exercise. <coughs> the, the exercises are fun. You can easily do it. I don't think you will have any problem. Of course, as usual, Surajana is always available. 365 days a day, 24 hours time, 365 days per year, and 24 hours per day. Okay, that means all the time. It's you. He said, the ball is in your court, my friend. You, ball is in your court. You send the message, and we will send, we will tell you the answer. Okay? So the ball is in your court. Don't say that, uh, Satya. I, I don't know this, uh, I don't know how to do this, so I stop it. No. Don't stop anywhere. Move on. But, whichever one you have a doubt, just send the message to us and make us work. Otherwise we will take, uh, we will see some movies and all that, okay? Make us work. So, send the, send the questions. So, here, in this, pro, in this uh, exercise, he has given, he asked you to plot the point uh, plot the point and then join the points, join the point, edges and points. You have to join all the points in an order and find out what shape do you get, okay? Um, okay, I don't think I need to, I need to tell, I need to tell you any more here, but all, all you have to do is just to uh, uh, mark the points. Suppose you have something like this, and you have a point here, you have a point here, you have a point here, another point here. If you join them, you join, you may get a, a square or a rectangle or a, a different shapes. You can see the different shapes here. So all you have to do is, you have to plot the points 
and then join them by straight lines in an order. Okay. So we are coming to end of this uh, chapter five. So again, once again, I told you a, a mathematician in the 17th century. His name is Rene Descartes. He is not in in short you know as a Cartesius because his name is Cartesius. The geometry he prepared or he he uh, developed is called Cartesian coordinate system. Now this coordinate geometry is very 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 important. Any object in the universe can be can be identified with a certain coordinates, x coordinate, y coordinate, and also z coordinate, and some other parameter. Well, we are not like I told you. This this chapter that you have now is only a plane geometry. That means yeah, everything is in a in a single plane. This is one plane. There is, there is, this is one plane. Now there is also three dimensional geometry, and uh, uh, what is that? Cylind there are other coordinates also. There are cylindrical coordinates. Here we are talking about Cartesian x y coordinates. Sometimes you use the cylindrical coordinates also. They are not, but they are not in your syllabus. I think probably you may get them in in intermediate. So not even in camp class. So. Uh, this finishes this uh, chapter i want you to do all those problems unless you do those problems see by uh, as soon as you hear as soon as he uh, the watch the video as soon as we you watch the video go to your uh, look at the test book uh, uh, take some uh, uh, graph papers mark them and solve the problems also incidentally i want to tell you it, it will be very useful if you can create a draft paper, maximum, I want to tell you, two minutes. I'm giving you only two minutes time. You have to prepare a draft paper on a white sheet. That means if you take, I will show you here. If you take a 18 of 11 sheet, what I will do is, you draw a line here, draw a perpendicular line in the middle. So you can mark the middle, okay? Now, so here you mark one centimeter, two, three, four, five like that. Similarly here one, two, three, four, five, six like that. Okay, similarly here one, two, three, four, five, six. And here at the bottom also what? Mark the centimeter. That means you put a scale here, one centimeter. That's it. And now you can, with the use of a set square and all that, you can draw a line, lines parallel like this, lines parallel, okay? Similarly, here you like draw lines parallel. You already prepared a, a graph sheet. You have to know how to prepare a graph sheet because what happens is in the time. Well, we came to the end of the coordinate geometry chapter. Uh, one special situation where you may run into trouble of not having a graph paper. So, in the general examination paper, he said, no, they were, I was told that it will be a book like, and you may not have, suppose you have given two graph sheets and one by mistake it was spoiled, so you should be able to generate a, a graph sheet. It's very simple. All you do is on the internet of the 11 sheet that you have, suppose you make a border, border like this, just to limit your graph to that, and then split this into four parts like this. Suppose you, whatever number, this is zero. Now here, one, two, three, four, like that, centimeter, and one, two, three, four, like that. Okay, similarly here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six. You, with a scale, mark this point, and then using a, using a set square, set square, and all that, you can draw a line like this, line like this, line like this, line like this. Okay, all right, you got it? So, similarly here, through that. Still, if you want to make it easy, you can mark one centimeter here, one centimeter, one, 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 two, three, four, then you can join these two lines and extend it, join these two lines, extend it, join these two lines, extend it, join these two lines. Similarly here, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, you can mark here 1, 2, 
3, 4, 5 like that. We join these two and extend it. Join these two, extend it. Join these two, extend it. Similarly on the other side also, if you do that, okay, if you use that, you have a drop apple. You should be able to do it maximum time. I am saying in Sujana, you have to be able to prepare a drop sheet in not more than two minutes. One and a half minutes, you should be able to do it. That means you don't have to worry if a graph sheet is available or not. You can construct it just like that. So basically you draw a margin so that you contain your graph sheet inside the sheet and then divide this, this rectangle into four equal parts. May not be exactly equal, equal parts. And then mark all these one, two, three, four, like a centimeter here, centimeter here, centimeter here. Here also you can, from here, you can mark the centimeters and mark the centimeters. You, if you join them and extend it, you get all the vertical line. Similarly here, here when you are marking, there are one, two, three, four. Similarly you mark one, two, three, four here. Join this, this, these two, extend it. Join these two, extend it. That's why you get a graph app. That's how you can prepare a graph sheet, even if uh, the, the given graph sheets are not adequate, or uh, even the one of the graph sheet is damaged due to some reason or other, you always have the graph sheet in your hand. So that's what it is. Okay? Thank you. I hope uh, uh, I hope you you understood how to make a graph sheet on your own. Thank you.